Happy Thursday, St. Luke's on the Lake. This is Father Justin, your rector here with your Thursday tidings. Two things I want to talk about. The first is many of you have emailed me about the prayer for spiritual communion that you used to see on the screen, uh, especially for those participating on Sunday mornings at home. I wanted to let you know that prayer was taken out. And the reason why is the bishop asked us to stop using that prayer because it's theologically incorrect. Now, I'm not going to throw the bishop under the bus for this one. That's the reason we're not using it. I, when I put it in, so your rector knew when he put it in, so I knew when I put it in, that it was not necessarily in line with the theology of the Episcopal Church or our Anglican heritage. But at the time I included it, it was a pastoral response to many of you who had emailed me feeling left out from being able to partake of the elements at communion. I knew a time would come when we would not be allowed to use that anymore. It is totally normal in the life of the church. Uh, as many of us rectors in, in this diocese were using that prayer or a similar version of that prayer. Many of us, almost all of us knew this day would come. So we're gonna look for creative ways to keep you engaged at home, encourage you when you feel ready to come in person now that we are distributing communion to uh, folks who gather in person to come partake because we are people of one body, one cup gathered in that space. That is really what our Eucharistic theology, our communion theology is all about, being together in some form or fashion. Now, does that make it any less special to be home? No. And for the time to come, many of you will need to stay home for your own health reasons and completely support that. Completely support that. We will look and I will look for creative ways to engage you during the distribution of communion in the days and weeks to come. But that prayer has to take a, a, a step out of our liturgy and out of our life together. But again, we will do some things differently. And, and by no means uh, is the bishop wrong to ask us to do that. The time had come, the pastoral window has closed as we begin in-person worship to now look for other ways to engage our at-home worshipers uh, during the time of distribution of communion. Now, the second thing I want to talk to you about is our prayer service for the nation next Wednesday, the 28th. We have 50 slots for the people who want to gather in person, register online. This is a nonpartisan, just opportunity to come together and pray right before the election so that maybe we can learn to come together and realize that no one side is more correct than another, that we're bigger than this. And especially as Christians, we are so much bigger than partisan politics. And the kingdom of God is not Republican, it's not Democrat, it's not Libertarian, it's not Independent. It is the kingdom of God. And we are all citizens of that kingdom by virtue of the incarnation of Jesus Christ. So our prayer service together next week is going to respect that, represent that, and hopefully give us the courage to be the Christians that God calls us to be, that Paul reminds us about, that Peter reminds us about in the book of Acts, to go out and help our brothers and sisters in this world come together no matter what happens on November 3rd, that we can come together and love one another and support one another. So I will see you Sunday. Of course, email me if you have any questions and I'll look forward to worshiping with you soon.